Hello for the Mathematics Today series expansion. So quite a tough question is to find the infinite expansion of the arc sine of x in full sigma notation or as is known in closed form. I actually done this particular um, uh, question as part of a bigger question the other day so I thought I'll do a separate one for just uh, on, in its own right because it's quite an interesting one. Okay so this is how we're going to obtain this particular expansion. We're going to start with a binomial expansion of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The reason being, uh, this is the differential of the arc sign. So we're going to say, okay, it's just a standard binomial. Let's rewrite it perhaps as 1 minus x squared to the power of minus a half. And let's write the first few terms. So we're going to have uh, 1 uh, plus minus a half over 1 factorial minus x squared or squared and so on. So I'm writing a few terms. Maybe we'll go up to uh, x cubed or rather the the, uh, the x to the 6 because this one is already squared inside the bracket. So one more term. Uh, so that should be just x there. I'm writing stupid things. As per usual, that's uh, doing stupid things is my middle name. Okay. 3 factorial minus x squared all squared plus terms of at least order of x to the power of, I should be cubed there, uh, power of 8 because of course they're going up in twos. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit just to, to see, to look for a pattern now. So first of all, let us let us notice that uh, we will, all the terms will be positive. Minus times a minus is a plus. That's a plus and the square will create a plus. This will go negative, but then we have in cubing, which will turn it back into negative. Negative times negative is positive. So all the terms will eventually be positive in this particular power series. So so we'll ignore the um, the um, uh, minuses. So I'm going to just write straight into pluses. So one plus a half over one factorial x squared plus a half times three over two over two factorial x to the power of four plus one more term. And now this is where the real work will begin. Looking for a pattern in all of this. Okay, three factorial x to the 6 plus terms of at least order x to the 8. All right. Um, there's an obvious pattern here with the factorials at the bottom, obviously, and the powers of x. That's not an issue. The, the annoying things is this uh, uh, half, 3 over 2s, 5 over 2s. We can see the pattern, but it's uh, kind of difficult to generalize and say, okay, when we go to sigma notation, because I'm going to write a sigma eventually here somewhere. Okay, from n is equal to something, to infinity, of course, and I need to write the general term. So, um, if we look at where the summation needs to start, this is my second term, and in order to produce an x squared, I need to start it from zero. So, that's my zero, zero uh, n, uh, n, th n is equal to zero, n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three. Let's go a little bit down the sequence just to get a few more terms of this, just to look for a general pattern. Sometimes looking at elementary um, things does help. So I often do that. Um, so let's uh, say, what does the x to the power of 10 will look like? Well, quite clearly, it's just two more terms down the line. So it will look something like this, 7 over 2, 9 over 2, or positive, of course, I'm expecting it to be, over a 5 factorial there, and the power, of course, will be x to the power of 10. So uh, what can I do with this particular term? Well, first of all, this halves, it's all halves in there. How many halves are multiplied together? Quite clearly, 5. So I can actually write them uh, as follows. I can write this particular term as 2 to the power of 5, that's a half written at the bottom, multiply 5 times, and then on the top I'll be left with 1 times 3, times 5, times 7, times 9, and of course my 5 factorial, which was already there, and the x to the 10, 
on the side this is now the next the next bit is the trickiest bit because this unless you've seen uh, work like this before you wouldn't perhaps uh, at further mass be thinking along those lines this is some kind of factorial but it needs a little bit of work it is a bit of manipulation in order to get it there so this is how you do a manipulation like this so all the action now is on the numerator so this is a very long numerator and that's the 2 to the 5 with the 5 factorial there um, and just if you bear with me to prepare it I'm leaving gaps as you can see because the problem here is I'm missing the even terms so that's the 5 times the 7 times a 9 times there and of course the x to the power of 10 and of course i would dearly will be like i would uh, dearly like to have there even numbers two four six eight and so on so i'm gonna put them because that's nice but of course i change the expression now quite clearly by uh, by inserting those numbers in there but now of course this is exactly the same if i do the same line at the denominator so that's definitely exactly the same okay um where can i go from there is the question well let's make a bit of space because lovely things begin to appear now which will help me see the general term on the top by doing this this was my my rationale was to actually create a 10 factorial so it's written backwards of course but it doesn't really matter 10 factorial that's all of this line here on the bottom i've got the 2 to the 5 i've got the 5 factorial these were already there and the question is now what is that 2 times 4 times 6 times 8 times 10 how can i write it in a in a different way so i can generalize this is another factorial if we factorize first of all a 2 out of each of those terms so let me just write it first of all I can factorize a 2 out of this 2, a 2 out of the 4, a 2 out of the 6, and so on. So, because these are no additions, then multiplications is 2 to the power of 5, and it will leave me inside there 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. This is exactly the same as this. And let's not forget, I'll put it on the top, x to the 10. And now I'm practically done because I can see now. Uh, the, the general term appearing so uh, I will have on the numerator of course my 10 factorial and that's my x to the power of 10 on the denominator I'm going to have 2 to the 5 times 2 to the 5 which is 2 to the power of 10 and I've got the 5 factorial which was already there and there's another 5 factorial so that is the term written very very differently uh, not the next one but the one after and so this would have been when n is equal to 5 in this particular summation so if you look at how the 5 is associated with those numbers well it's quite obvious that my sigma for this particular one actually let me just make uh, actually uh, no i'll do it here then i'll write it again um it's going to be on the top uh, a 10 so that's 2n factorial because when I'm putting 5 there, I should be getting the 10. And everything has a 10 is that is something with the 2n. So that's 2 to the power of 2n there. And the power there, x to the power of 2n. And of course, these are just the n's. And I can write it as n factorial times n factorial. Let's see me make some room because it looks a bit messy now. And I can barely see what is what in there. So let's take that off and let's see what we have done so far um, so far we have actually find a general term not for the arc sign but for this particular uh, binomial expansion which is the same as that so this is definitely the same as this running from n is equal to 1 to infinity okay how are we going to get now the arc sign out of this remember in the beginning i mentioned the reason I picked this particular expression is because that's the exact differential of the arc sign. So let me just put the extra lines now in there. And I can say that is, of course, the same as this. What I can do is I can integrate 
both sides of this particular equation with respect to x. This is a technique, we're not gonna question its validity at the moment uh, from, from the point of view, is that uh, valid to, to integrate, uh, that's okay for this, but for obviously for a power series to integrate term by term, but we'll, like, we'll assume that this is okay and it's doable. It's actually in fact correct for this particular one. So let's see what happens now when we do this particular integration with respect to x. Well, the left-hand side is by, we, we all know this is the in fact, the arc sine of x which we would like to have is power series let's put plus c there and what happens now uh, with this particular one well summation integration can actually commute can actually be changed not commute uh, they do commute or they can be interchanged uh, i didn't leave enough space i wrote too high up let me just rewrite this otherwise it will look very very messy and i won't be able to follow it myself so equal and let's rub this off that's all gone and so just to understand basically what this means uh, the summation has a dummy variable n what does that mean anything that has n cannot go outside the summation the integration is with respect to x so anything that has x cannot go outside the integral so the ends can't go outside the integral quite clearly uh, but they cannot go outside the summation the the and, and vice versa so if we interchange so we'll put the sigma first now and the integral of course it will be somewhere here and there's the dx okay i'm gonna have left too much space or too little space i hope it's about right there um the bits that have n can go outside the integral just n so the 2n factorial 2n all factorial if you want and also i have um so I'll write this as uh, 4 to the power of n. Let's leave it as it is for the time being. 2 to the power of 2n. That's this bit here. Um, I'm going to write the n factorial uh, multiplied by n factorial as n factorial squared. So the, all these bits have n and can go outside. This has n. Can it go outside? The answer is no. Why not? Because that has an x, of course, in there. So it's with respect to x. So that stays. So we got, of course, an x to the power of 2n. I left too much space for that. Let's even just write the dx again and bring it a little bit closer. Okay, so this is now so far so good. Is this uh, particular integration difficult to do? The answer is that is very, very simple as an integral. So um, let's uh, make room up here because of course it's just the power of x. It's the standard, increase the power by one and divide by the new power. So the left hand side of that will now give us the arc sine of x plus the arbitrary constant of the integration, which of course we need to evaluate at this stage, um, is equal to um, the sigma with all of this mess, n is equal to 0, 2n factorial over 2 to the power of 2n n factorial squared and of course i'm going to integrate that and this will be x increase the power by one to the 2n plus one divide by the new power and of course there's going to be uh, loads and loads of uh, constants because don't forget this is not one item it's for every value of n there's a, there's an integral to to be done uh, so all these constants of of, of uh, that we're going to get from the integration we're going to shove them into here so i'm not going to put anything on this particular side so let's find this uh, c now first of all um we're going to pick a suitable number which suits uh, suits us nicely x is equal to zero is lovely because you put x is equal to zero into this line, we're gonna have the arc sine of zero is quite clearly zero plus the constant. And if we look at this particular sum, if x becomes zero, there's nothing in there. So that's equal to zero, which means basically this constant is in fact a nothing. And uh, what else can we do for this particular one? Maybe we can write a little bit neater, more compactly. Um, and something else which you need to notice in there, not that you have to, um, let me just uh, make some space to write my final answer there. The arc sine of x has closed form. This particular one, one way of writing it. Um, what I want to point out is uh, this expression here. Oops. 
the two n factorial uh, you remember how i had it before i had it as n factorial over n factorial i don't know if you recognize that this is a binomial coefficient the n choose r type uh, coefficient in fact that is 2n choose n okay so we could write it like this L let me just write it like this uh, well you can leave it in factorial so it doesn't really matter so this is just this item there so that is 2n choose n then perhaps we can uh, I write this as uh, so we write it as uh, 4 to the n or so we leave it doesn't really hardly matters okay let's uh, put it as uh, um, x to the power of 2n plus 1 there's many different ways and variants of this particular expression we got let's put the 4 to the power of n is less to write that is this bit here and we got that long bracket 2n plus 1 there's uh, many other ways you can i guess write this sometimes you can write it as i don't know you can split so this is my final answer by the way but i'm just giving you different ways uh, you, perhaps you could write this you could write the x to the 2n plus 1 as x to the 2n times uh, perhaps uh, an x and then put the 2 to the 2n and then write this as um, 2n plus 1 and then this term can be written as an x over 2 to the power of 2n or x squared over 4 all to the n this x because it has no um, dependence on n you can write outside so this is just lone x it can't go outside the sigma and you can have just things that might look like that or like that this is just different variants that you might see uh the the arc sign written as okay um, i hope you found that uh, interesting particularly manipulation factorials and it all made sense uh we achieved what we have to achieve find the infinite expansion of the arc sign in sigma notation it's right behind me i hope you enjoyed it i hope you join me soon and who's laughing now